it's Halloween, and that means it's time to make a very spooky weed. Let's get started. So today's mead is inspired by Halloween, as you're watching this, or later on in life, you might, this might be past Halloween for you. This mead is a candy corn mead. Now, a lot of you are gonna find that candy corn are, are very available after Halloween, because people wanna get rid of them. So maybe you'll end up wanting to make this, who knows if you will. This is a candy corn mead. I started with this recipe right here on the screen. Um, I used, it's about a one and a half gallon batch that came down to about one and a quarter, but I honestly just lost a quarter. Um, it was one pound of clover honey, three pounds of candy corn. I used these three bags of candy corn that I bought. Water up to that one and a half gallons. Um, Lalvin EC1118 and some yeast nutrient. I used Fermade O and did that. So mixed all that together. Basically what I took is I took I, the spookiest thing of all about this video is the fact that I mysteriously lost all of the footage of me making this mead. Um, so I'll describe it to you with eerie detail. Uh, I took those three pounds of candy corn and boiled them in water. I put a gallon of water in, boiled the candy corn in there. They literally just melted away real fast. Then I mixed in a pound of honey with that. I put that into a bucket, I let it cool. And then I, of course, at that point, when it was cool, added my yeast, took a gravity reading. Our starting gravity for this thing was uh, roughly about 1.095. So we're, you know, not quite about 13% if it fermented out. It fermented in two weeks. And then I noticed that it didn't actually ferment out. It kind of halted at about 1.020. So that was kind of spooky. And uh, I, I figured that's because there's some sugars or stuff in there that are not necessarily great for the yeast, even though theoretically it's regular sugar. And the EC1118 is like a puncher, you know, mead in the face style of yeast that can ferment through anything. Interesting enough. Um, so all what I did is I stabilized it, very spooky. And then I added half of a pound of just regular clover honey back to it. So this has a pound and a half of honey, final gravity 1.040, it's a little bit sweet. I've got two things in front of me. I've got the unsweetened version. This is the one that ended at 1020. So we're gonna go and open this up and um, taste it. This is what it was like before we back sweetened. It's very thick. The mouthfeel on this is huge. It's got sweetness, of course. It uh, The floral side honestly takes over a lot of the candy corn. Um, I don't know if you have much candy corn, but it's like, it is a strong flavor, but the honey is very strong here too, which is nice. I mean, you do get a little bit of that candy corn style to it. It's uh, not super, super strong, which is interesting. It's like on the back end of the palate. So here's the other version. This is the back sweetened one. Now, I will say with this mead being what it is, I don't care about clarity. Some of you are gonna get real mad at me and yell at me in the comments. That's fine, whatever. This is a candy corn mead. Uh, maybe it would clear, I don't really know. Um, I will say, and I will note, I did attempt to clear it via cold crashing. I put it into my refrigerator over here to try and clear it up and, oh, that was fun. It kind of did, I mean, that's a little bit clear. This is the back sweetened version. So back sweetening automatically causes problems. So I tried to clear it, sorry. Honestly, you know, ooh. That honey is bringing out, the sweetness from the honey is bringing out other notes now. Other candy, the, the candy corn notes. Hmm. This mead's pretty young, I'll be honest. Full transparency. This video, this mead is um, about a month old at this point. And that's because I realized I wanted to make this mead and I realized it very late, so sorry. 
I think the honey, I think the sweetness is nice. It's 1040, that's pretty dang sweet. Uh, it does still have young youthfulness to it. Like it's alcoholic, but like I said, we're a month old. So I, I don't know. I think that that's to be expected. It's also EC1118, which generally has some more booziness to it. Takes a little while to come down. I do like the yeast for many things though. So I use that recipe right here. The, the fun fact about this is you're gonna see a lot of discount candy starting tomorrow. If you're watching this on Halloween, there's discount candy just thrown on the shelves. Maybe candy corn's your next one. You might be able to start yourself a candy corn mead. It's really not bad. It does need time, but what mead doesn't need time? Um, there are lots of different variations, I'm sure. I think there are different kinds of candy corn. I just used the really the most stereotypical candy corn you could get. Most of this brew is candy corn sugar. And I know somebody right now is furiously typing in the comments saying, you know, that this is actually not considered a, a mead. This is more of a wine. Okay, whatever. The truth is the predominant, one of the predominant characters in here is honey. And while I might not be at 51% sugar from a uh, honey, I would still consider this a mead. And that makes it spooky. I hope that you had a wonderful Halloween. This mead might not be your cup of tea, probably is not. In fact, um, I'll be honest with you, I don't know if I'll go and recreate this again. Because it's not necessarily like um, falling in the, de the department of wow. It is like, it's okay, it's sugary. Maybe, who knows, maybe come three or four months from now, there's gonna be this amazing flourishment of this. And I plan on actually taking and bottling it and doing those things um, and putting some back. So maybe next Halloween, this will make its appearance and something else even spookier will appear on this channel. Happy Halloween. Go make this, go make some weird candy mead. Um, I, I, my channel is turning into candy mead central and I'm kind of having fun with it. I still make regular recipes, but it's kind of fun to see what happens. So. Happy Halloween, I'll see you next time.